Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Pulp Today. I begin this episode by drinking out of my Bronze Gazette mug. Coffee, maybe with a little brandy in it. That's uh, that's that's for you to say. It's a really nice mug uh, given to me by Chuck Welsh, the editor of the Bronze Gazette. And thanks for contributing a couple of articles to his fine magazine. Today, we're going to talk about the, uh, the descendant of the Man of Bronze, the Man of Steel. It's Superman is a great novel by Tom DeHaven. It's, uh, DeHaven had, had gotten some fame writing a novel set in the 1930s and supposedly had fallen in love with the period. And uh, DC, kind of surprisingly, reached out and said, write a serious novel about Superman set in the 1930s. And he did so. It's a, it's a really great portrait of Depression-era America that just happens to also be a coming-of-age story about a young man from Kansas named Clark Kent who's on his way to being Superman, and he does become Superman before the end of the novel. And it's not set in any particular continuity, but um, the cover image featuring the Max Fleischer Superman cartoon character it gives you kind of a sense of how it's going to feel and uh and what take it has on the character which is a very 1930s take uh the portrait of clark is a very sensitive one and i kind of love the fact that the author even when he's describing a scene of superman's daring do it's always clark punched the robot clark lifted the end of the car clark did this clark flew through the window because ultimately that's his name. He's Clark Kent. Um, I want to read you a section. Uh, he has a good friend named Willie Berg, a uh, photographer who he met while they were traveling the country, working for one of FDR's recovery programs. And um, S Superman, Clark, has just had a fight with some Lex Luthor robots and has beaten them up, though it has shredded his costume. He still hasn't figured out the indestructible costume thing. He and Willie are excitedly going over the experience they just had together. That cop. Yeah, did you see that guy? With the nose, right? The cop with the red nose? Was he a riot or what? Like he was going to have a heart attack. I bet he quits the force. I bet they make him. And the other one, you see him try to grab my cape? He tried to get your cape? Which one? Big mustache? He tried to get, grab your cape. Man, it's lucky he didn't end up hitchhiking a ride. Clark rubs a hand around his jaw. I was afraid I'd drop you. You were? I wasn't sure I had a good grip. It all happened so fast. You had a great grip. I was afraid I'd drop the stupid camera. They're on the flat, tar-papered roof of their tenement on St. Mark's Place. Willie sitting on the parapet smoking while Clark pulls on a pair of trousers, a shirt, and black socks off a clothesline. Stepping into his trousers, Clark tugs them over his ruined tights. He retrieves his eyeglasses from the little pocket he sewed into his cape and then stuffs in the tail. It feels lumpy. Does it look lumpy? He turns around so Willie can give his opinion. It looks all right. Makes your rear end look kind of big. How big? Relax, it looks fine. Clark goes and sits next to Willie while he puts on his socks. Can I borrow your shoes and your belt? Willie makes a fake face but okay, belt and shoes. Then he says, can I ask you something? Hmm? Who are you right now? What? Who are you supposed to be right now, Clark or Superman? I'm not supposed to be anybody. It's all just, because whether you know it or not, you're still talking in that deep voice. I am? You just changed it, but yeah, you were. Clark wrinkles his forehead. I guess I should watch that. He stands up. So where is this place? Willie points downtown and to the west. You can't miss it. It's got a big globe on the roof. He stoops and picks up his camera from the rooftop, ejects a huge flash bulb, and lobs it casually over his shoulder. They hear it burst down in the courtyard. Then Willie snaps the film hatch shut. I kind of thought we'd get a bigger reaction from that guy. What guy? What guy? Luther. Oh. Yeah, me too. Think we did a lot of damage? 
How much do you think it'll cost to replace those doors? Willie drops the roll of exposed film into Clark's palm. Forget about the stupid doors. And don't scuff the shoes. Clark steps onto the parapet. And don't let anybody see you flying around in those clothes. I won't. Clark doesn't move. Are you going to do this or not? I'm a little nervous. You just annihilated a robot. I think you can talk to the editor of the Daily Planet. Would you go already? I'm freezing to death up here. But wake me when you get back. So yes, I left out that he has also just flown to Lex Luthor to tell him I know it was you who made the robots and confronted him. Uh, one other very short thing I want to read, just because I love it so much, is um, Clark flies to the Daily Planet, has film photographs of Superman, so he makes the big scoop. He gets hired to write the, the report. Uh, and then he, in the lobby of the building, he runs into a woman who wants to tell him a story. And he starts asking her questions. And in his internal monologue, he just says this. Just listen to me, thinks Clark. All that's left is when, where, and why. I could do this. I really could. Because, he thinks, I honestly don't want to go around beating up robots night and day, raising blisters on the back of a bully's hand, carrying dead bodies down the courthouse steps. So... I have just always loved the idea that Superman sees his job as punching robots. <laughs> like, my alternatives are interviewing people, punching robots, and I kind of rather interview people than punch robots, which I think is a particularly hilarious take on uh, the dichotomy between Superman and Clark Kent. But uh, all I can say is I, I recommend this book as highly as uh, possible, particularly if you are in, interested in uh, in Superman and in the history of the character. It's just such a great take on him. And again, if you have no interest in the character, it's a very solid book about American culture in the 1930s. Until next time, hope you enjoyed this brief episode of Pulp Today.